Can you see my eyebrow, Chad? This was difficult. Hey, YTPC. Piping artist stuff here. So, um, I was smoking my Friday Savinelli with some Haunted Bookshop in it. But because it took me so long in having coffee as well, because, you know, gotta have your morning coffee. But because it took me so long to narrow down my answers, um, my pipe is cached. So, cached, ashed, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It's done. So I'm not going to smoke through this video. However, I'm going to say, Chad, this was hard. This was so hard. Um, so the first song, the, he had four questions. The four by four... Um, second verse <laughs> challenge and um it was it was fun to, to go back through and, and look at my past try to think of of exactly which albums and which bands <clears throat> but it was hard to narrow it down because i love so much music so the first one was really easy number one um well it wasn't really easy but it, it was easier than than two three and four uh, one song that blew you away the first time you heard it. Um, gosh, so many, but this one in particular, I remember exactly where I was. It was a, uh, a dance at school. Usually they have dances after school or on the weekends, but this was like a fourth grade or fifth, I think it was fourth grade um, graduation dance. So we were graduating to the fifth grade. Um, gosh, what year was that? That must have been... I know it came out in 83, but it was probably 84. Yeah, end of 84. I remember where I was. I don't remember the exact date, but I remember where I was. We were in the gym at Yucca Elementary School in Artesia, New Mexico. And the song that, that came on was Red Red Wine by UB40. And I was like, what in the world is this song? I had to find out. I went to the DJ. I found out what song it was. And because we had a little DJ guy uh, actually playing music for this little dance. Back when we didn't have, you know, CDs or digital, <laughs> digital music uh, banks to get our music from. So um, I remember going home and looking it up. And then the next time I went to go visit my dad, I remember getting the 45. Uh, they had a, a 45 and then they also had the cassette and on one side it was red red wine and the other side i have no clue because i don't think i ever listened to the other side but i did have both the little 45 and the single cassette of red red wine because i just it just blew me away i was i'm a goofy kid you know or i was um number two was two albums that opened me up to a whole new world of music this was difficult because there were so many things that I heard like my fifth and sixth grade year that just, I was like, what? There's more than 70s and country and, you know, what they play on MTV. Well, during the day, because I wasn't allowed to watch MTV in the evening. And I only saw it every other weekend because that's when I visited my dad. And he's the only one who had MTV. My mom didn't let us watch MTV. So the first band is Metallica, Master of Puppets. Um, I believe it came out in 85 or 86. But I remember hearing it in the sixth grade. It was the end of um, middle school. Almost, no, no, the beginning of middle school, not the end. And um, I was just blown away because I hadn't really heard much metal. And I remember back in that time, MTV was very um, top 20s music. And then they had like a hard rock hour and, you know, some late night music. So I'd never heard MTV on... Um, I never heard Metallica, excuse me, on MTV. So a friend of mine had the album and the little Walkman and like let me use it. Whoa, I was I was blown away. Master, uh, yeah, Master, Master of Puppets. Um, another album that opened my eyes to more than just rock and um, country and, and bluegrass and everything was Billie Holiday. Strange Fruit. Now, the album came out in 1939, and um, that's not when I heard it, because I obviously wasn't alive. But um, it, my junior year in high school, uh, I had a friend uh, who 
was taking classical music and he really liked blues and and jazz and he had all of these albums and and cassettes of different um, blues and jazz musicians and he gave me a recorded cassette of Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit and that was it just blew me away like this woman's voice like what what kind of music is this and I know my dad had liked jazz when I was younger but he never really listened to it when we were around it was just one of his private things he did when he wanted to listen to it he listened to it so those are my two albums. Gosh, this is long-winded. This can be a long video chat, and it's all your fault. <laughs> all right, so number three is bands that you associate with your youth. Well, my youth is split up into three sections because my youth, my younger years, like pre-10, you know, I only listened to what my, my parents listened to. So the three bands I picked, I picked three bands for my younger years, pre-10, like 10 and younger. I would say Bread because it was my mom's favorite band. We listened to it all the time. Elton John, because, well, everybody listened to him and he had such great music. And even though we weren't supposed to listen to him because my mom was Joe's Witness and that's what I was being raised with and they were completely anti-gay. Um, so, and I, I, I didn't even know. I just loved his music and everybody else did. And then another one from my pre-10, uh, pre-teen years is Adamant because that was my first concert. My dad took my sister and I uh, to go see Adamant and he, we had little roach clip feathers in our hair. But So those are the three early years bands. Then my middle school and high school years, I'd have to say what I listened to the most in my middle school years and high school years was, or just reminds me of it if I hear it on the radio, is Depeche Mode. I had a friend from Houston, moved here to El Paso, <clears throat> excuse me and um the violet femmes and nirvana just because i went to high school in the 90s and so nirvana you know pearl jam all those bands but specifically nirvana because it was the first one i heard out of all the seattle grunge bands so depeche mode violet fans and nirvana for my teen years now my early 20s i also consider my youth because i did so much growing in those years um, Grateful Dead, even though I started listening to them in my, my teen years, the Grateful Dead, I went to more shows in my 20s and associate my early 20s with all my hippie years, <laughs> traveling around, living in a, in a VW bus, living in a hippie commune, and then a nudist colony and going to shows. It was, it was a complete change. Dave Matthews, because when I was 21, I lived at the Grand Canyon for a year and worked on the South Rim. And everybody listened to Dave Matthews. Plus, I saw him in concert several times in my 20s. And then also, Ani DeFranco. She was the most awesome 20s musician, like when I was in my 20s. I just was like, woman power. <laughs> so that was that. And then the final question. I'm finally getting to the end. Let's see if I can keep this under 10 minutes. Four albums that turned me into a true fan. Um, the first was American Beauty. So yes, I'm talking about the Grateful Dead. Um, I got American Beauty when I was in my teens and I played it over and over and over and over again. Box of Rain. I mean, come on. American Beauty was just the best songs. Uh, another album that I really, really loved was Terrapin Station. And it was very, very biblical and, and they had a lot of, you know, Old Testament stories in a lot of their songs. So that one was phenomenal. Uh, Oxo Moxoa was a great album. And I was a toss up between Working Man's Dead and um, Europe 72 because they both have some of the same songs, but also like a mix up. But anyways, American Beauty, Terrapin Station, Working Man's Dead, I'll just go with Working Man's Dead. And Oxo Moxoa, because 72 is more of a tour album. But um, I could have said, all the bootlegs <laughs> cassettes that people gave me or that you know I bought um, from people but those are the four Grateful Dead albums I hope that I did well enough because it was difficult I love so much music I mean I'm sure I left out stuff that I'm gonna hear a song and be like man that makes me you know go back in time <laughs> but thank you Chad that was fun kind of a pain but it was really really fun 
So thank you guys so much. If you guys haven't um, gone over to see all the all the videos that people are making for this challenge, please do. It's super fun. It's really interesting to see what uh, music people went through in their in their life. So, anyways, keep it under ten. Keep it under ten. <laughs> I don't think I can. All right, guys, have a great time. I'll see everybody on everybody's lives.